it's I all good, no worries. It. I have a big picture that says record on my, my screen, so thank you for the reminder, uh, Pablo. Great. All right. So uh, Wood Technology Center is one of the co-locations of Seattle Central College. Uh, we're located in the central area. Uh, we've been teaching building for over 80 years. Um, we have full-time day programs where you can earn an AAS degree in carpentry uh, and also in boat building and repair. And the entry requirements are the same for, for any community college in, in our district that either one needs to have a high school diploma, a GD uh, or equivalent, or, or we do have some running start students um, who start uh, while they're still in, in high school and they finish up their high school schooling uh, with us. All right, so we have a $27 million new campus that opened in 2012. Uh, we were the last campus to get funding before the world financial collapse in 2008. Um, so we have a, a really, really fantastic um, facility, our carpentry area. Uh, we've got an indoor build space. We've got a fixed machinery room. We've got indoor tool storage, and then we've got a build yard uh, where we can build bigger projects outside. So we tend to do a lot of our work right on, right on campus because we have a lot of, a lot of area to, to build. Um, and when you come into the program, all students start with a fantastic class called Introduction to Professional Woodworking. This is primarily a shop-based class, and you learn everything from layout, hand tools, uh, portable electric and pneumatic hand tools, stationary power tools. Um, you learn fall protection. Uh, you learn how to maintain and do light repairs and set up equipment. Um, it's a fantastic, fantastic class that really gets you going. Most of our instruction is, is demonstration uh, and then you immediately get to go practice it. Um, so we learn by, we learn by doing. Um, so here are just some shots of the, the core shop uh, and the students seeing a demonstration. Then the second through fifth quarters are spent in the carpentry shop. Um, so we do everything in the shop uh, or in the program um, from building layout, concrete forms, concrete through framing, interior, exterior finish, we remodel. Um, we've had students build cabinets. We focus on high-end trim. Um, you get a really, really, really broad skill set. And we get calls all the time from contractors looking for skilled employees. Um, so there's a, a great job market right now. Uh, contractors are, are desperate for skilled folks. So again, from complex roofs to high-end finish work, um, you get exposed to, to, to a lot of different skills. And, and the way the program is, is organized is we have four different curricula, you, you, well, five actually. You start with core, the intro to professional woodworking. Uh, we call it core. Then we have a quarter that's dedicated to concrete building forms, building layout, architectural drawings. Then we have a quarter that's dedicated to interior and exterior finish. We've got a quarter that's dedicated to framing. We've got a quarter that's dedicated to remodel and preservation work. But in reality, all the skills bleed over, right? Concrete project or carpentry projects aren't divided into discrete tasks. So there may be some times in finished carpentry when you're gonna do a little framing or when you're gonna do a little concrete work, but we have kind of a dedicated curriculum and we just cycle through the quarters and we enroll every quarter. So depending on when you go into core, you'll jump into whatever curriculum we're teaching the next quarter. And these quarters are designed to be taken in, in sequence uh, and, and consecutively. Um, and the idea is during your year, year and a half with us, you'll go through the entire curriculum. Any questions to this point? The degree requires five quarters. We typically don't run in the summer except for the intro class. So you could start in the summer, but most students take about a year and three quarters total elapsed time to earn their degree. We typically have skill building projects inside the shop and in the yard. And then we typically work on uh, an outside project. Um, a lot of times that's in our yard, but our last project was a net zero energy passive house uh, that was designed to sit on top of an existing garage in Columbia City. And our students did everything from framing 
um, and they decided they wanted to build cabinets um, the way you would, even though we, we had a cabinet shop, um, the way a carpenter might build cabinets out in the field. So we, we, we fill, field built these cabinets and our students got to not only build the cabinets and install the hardware, but they got to install the, the cabinetry in the, in the project. Um, we built the, the project previous to that was a 1700 square foot house that was built in sections in our yard, then disassembled driven down in the middle of the night to Madison Park, put on a barge and barged up to Whidbey. And here's the, the house on its foundation. We did not do the foundation work up on Whidbey uh, or, and we did not drive the barge, but we built the house uh, in, our, in our yard. And again, we did everything from framing to siding to roofing. We installed the tile inside. We did the drywall, sort of like whatever the, the project required. Um, we worked on it. And these projects take, you know, multi-year, uh, they're multi-year projects, but it's a great way for students uh, to get exposed to real, real world situations um, and to have some accountability to, to an owner, um, to have to follow plans, to build the spec. Um, and when this was house was dropped on the foundation, it was within an eighth of an inch square overall with the students did a fantastic, a fantastic job. So here is our net zero energy passive house. Uh, we had to, students had to engineer this cribbing. We, we built it outside because the plan was for a flatbed truck to come underneath it and scoop it up off the, the cribbing and drive it onto the site. But uh, again, this was net zero energy. There were solar panels up on the, on the ceiling. Uh, we work with a, with a nationally renowned uh, passive house architect, Joe Giampietro, who designed this, this project. And this, this was an amazing experience. We did all the interior woodworking, we, uh, installed the floor and the drywall. We built the kitchen. Um, install the triple glazed windows, uh, which meet Passive House requirements. Um, so this was the, the last project that we worked on kind of right before we, we uh, the whole world was interrupted by the, by the pandemic. Uh, so we're hoping to work with the architect again in the future uh, on his next project. Then here are some shots. Um, there's a really strong sense of community at school. Um, you know, this has been interrupted a little bit as we've had to learn, keep people a little bit more separate and, and uh, more remote, but, but as COVID restrictions are dropped, um, there's a great amount of student involvement um, in the campus. There's a, a lot of fun to be had. Uh, we have an end of quarter barbecue, usually involves some kind of competition. Um, we have a very active or had a very active student council for students who wanna get involved in student leadership. Um, here's some, some images of the, the core competition from, from various years. We had sawhorse jousting uh, one year. This was the carpentry entry, uh, they, they, the dragon. It's still in the shop, it was, it was beautiful. Um, and then we also work a lot on community projects. So it's a great way to get back to the community. And so some examples are we built the kitchen and all the food storage area at St. Mary's Food Bank, uh, which is a food bank in our, in our community near school. Um, we have built many of the tiny houses for the Low Income Housing Institute Tiny House Village. And in fact, our CAD students uh, did all the drawings and created the drawing set that goes out nationally um, to various groups who want to build these, these tiny houses. Uh, we've worked with the Northwest African American Museum, the Burke Museum, Northwest Eco Building Guild, Passive House Northwest, just, just, to, name a, just to name a few. And then we also give back to the school community. So we were asked by the found our Seattle found, uh, Colleges Foundation uh, to build some dog houses and a little playhouse. And so we dedicated a little bit of time and a quarter uh, for some students who were willing to, to volunteer some of their hours uh, to build these really beautiful um, small structures, which, uh, you know, it's all carpentry, but we, we got to use our CNC machine for some of this detailing here. Um, anyway, these are really great examples of, of the creativities that our students uh, possess and develop while they're learning with us. Uh, and you can earn your AS degree. So we have students who've never been to college. They're the first person in their family who've been to college. And we have students who've already attended uh, and have some kind of degree and everybody in between and everybody's welcome. But uh, we encourage folks to um, satisfy the requirements to, to fulfill their degree. Um, you can never have too many degrees. Uh, employers tell us all the time that it shows that somebody can complete something, that you can have a goal and you can accomplish something. Um, so again, the, the degree takes about 
one and three quarters years. And in addition to the, the carpentry curriculum, there's a, a math class, an English class, a psychology class, and a computer aided drafting and design class, which I happen to teach as part of the, the degree. And all of the classes are tailored and they're, they're offered on our campus. They're tailored towards construction. Um, so they're, they're a nice, um, provide nice academic support for the kind of the kind of math skills and verbal skills and certainly CAD skills um, that employers are looking for. Uh, and so we uh, hope to see you in the carpentry program. Um, we build square level and plumb. Uh, we build to 16th inch tolerances um, and you'll get a great, great, great foundation in residential carpentry um, if you decide to come and uh, learn how to build with us. Questions before I kind of jump into the kind of more of the, the nuts and bolts of the of the program. Folks with me to this point. We're good. Okay. So this is a daytime program. And we're in class about from 830 to 315. This will vary a little bit from quarter to quarter. We meet Monday to Thursday. Lots of our students work after school or they'll work on Fridays and weekends, but this is a full-time day program. The first quarter is Introduction to Professional Woodworking, which we call CORE, which is 18 credits, and then four quarters of the specific program, carpentry in this case, uh, would be the shop requirements for the class. And then the related instruction courses uh, are CAD, and we teach a, a great program called Vectorworks, and you get a free license of Vectorworks that's good for a year. Um, construction math, English, and psychology. And so that's the, the, the education pathway, if you will, the, the degree requirements. And most of our students, um, these are all three credit classes. Most of our students who, who enroll uh, go ahead and complete the, the degree program. Then in terms of careers and jobs, we, I still get five to six calls a week from employers looking for help. Um, there's such a need uh, right now in Seattle for residential carpenters. Um, the, the average age of, of people in the workplace is approaching 60. So there's gonna be a huge, they, they call it the gray tidal wave. Um, there's gonna be a huge number of people retiring. And for every five people retiring in the industry right now, one person is entering. Uh, so, um, there's huge demand. Our students uh, um, end up working for really great companies. Um, they earn well beyond a living wage. Um, our, our, our graduates um, go on to work pretty much wherever they want to. Um, and, and I'm not being glib on that. I'm, I'm definitely bragging about that. But we have students who want to work in new construction. And so they go work for companies that build new. A lot of our students are really interested in, in remodel. Uh, companies, so they'll go work for remodel companies. We have a lot of students who are very interested in sustainable building and so and green building and uh, high performance buildings. And so we have students who will go work for passive house um, contractors. Uh, we've had students go work for um, testing companies that, that perform blower door tests and all the various uh, performance tests on a building. Um, so really the, the, the sky is the, the limit in terms of where to graduates Go go work. It really is depends on what your what your passion is. Um, so our students, in terms of wages, you know, every company is different. But our our students are starting kind of mid to high twenties. I mean, it depends on what your skill level is, obviously. And some students have some skill when they arrive, and some have never picked up a tool before, and some have twenty years experience. And everybody's welcome, and there's a place for everybody. Um, and so it really it really kind of depends um, after usually about six to nine months, most of our students are in leadership positions on their job. They have way more skill and knowledge than a lot of the people who've been in the field for a long time. Um, and so most of our students very quickly get promoted up through the ranks of, of the companies. Um, so it's, it's not uncommon after a year or two to be in kind of the mid thirties, high thirties um, in terms of, in terms of, uh, terms of wages. We, we work a lot with companies in the area. They love our students. Um, so we've been very, very, very fortunate to have great industry partners who are, are very keen on hiring our students. There are a lot of opportunities for summer jobs. There are a lot of opportunities for part-time jobs so you can get some industry experience while you're in school. 
Again, the typical schedule, you'll start out 8.30 to 3.15. In Carpentry, we start a little bit later. We start around 9 and go to about 3.30, but it's about that Monday to Thursday. Uh, many students work in addition to, to going to school. Um, and we're preparing you to go work as a professional carpenter. And so part of being a professional carpenter is having a, a toolkit. Um, so in core, there's a, there's a core tool list that's probably in the two $300 range for basic hand tools and layout tools. Uh, and then in carpentry, there are tools that are required every quarter. And the, the idea is by the time you're done with us, when, when you're ready to, to graduate, that you have a, a really nice complete set of hand tools. Um, you've got your nail bags and your tool bags. You probably have your circular saw and your um, sawzall. Um, sort of you have the tools that employers expect a beginning carpenter to have. Um, and we don't require that you buy them all at once. We recognize that, that you know, um, funds are limited, but we, we have a very, very um, well curated tool list that's required um, as part of the, part of the program. Um, the, what type of faculty are teaching in this program? So um, I've been building since the early nineties. Um, I've built houses, I've built houseboats, I've built boats, I've been built cabinets, I've built high-end furniture, I ran my own company. For about 15 years. I teach CAD. I've been teaching in carpentry since 2015. So we have great depth. Um, I oftentimes will teach with a second um, instructor and I'm hoping our instructor next quarter um, comes with, with deep um, experience in the field. So, so you're learning from folks who um, not only have sort of formal woodworking training, but have been out in the field for many years um, as well. And then if you're interested in finding out more about the program, by all means, send me an email. My email is in the, in the, in the program. You can contact our front office. Um, things are slow right now all across the, the college. Um, a lot of people are still working remotely, so don't, don't despair. If nobody gets back to you, just send another email or send me an email. Um, if you have any questions, you can visit our, our website, uh, seattlecentralwoodtech.seattlecentral.edu. Um, at some point, I imagine the spring we'll be offering tours again. We, we, we used to have tours every week. Uh, we had to stop during COVID, but, but again, as restrictions come, come down, um, we probably will be able to start giving tours again, but that will depend on um, the state of Washington and, and King County um, when restrictions are, are, are loosened up. Um, but you can always, always contact me, send me uh, an email, and I'm happy to talk with you more about the program or answer questions. Um, All right, that's all I got formally. I think I'll, I'll turn it over to you folks and see if there are any questions that, that you have. And again, you're welcome to send them in the chat. You're also welcome to just unmute yourself. Um, uh, so we have, uh, Terry asked a question if it is mid thirties per hour. Yeah, yeah, so most students are starting mid twenties or so per hour. Um, and most of our students are, are employed full time year round. Um, and very quickly get promoted um, and, and wages go up from there. You know, there's, there's a big discrepancy in, in wages. So some companies like anyway, will pay more than others, but our students are commanding higher and higher salaries because their skill set is so in demand. It's a great time to be training as a carpenter right now. Cool, thanks, thanks for that question. Kitty? Question. Yep. Um, I, was, um, I, I would love to do this program, but I couldn't commit that time, you know, during the day. But I noticed in the website there's a continued education, but it doesn't look like the, the woodworking classes are being currently offered. Is that am I reading that correctly? So the the nighttime program has nothing to do with the daytime program. It was started this year and it's largely classroom based. So they, they meet in the lecture hall one night a week. Um, and then they meet, I think, one Saturday a month or so on shop, but it's not very much hands-on at all. So it's, yeah. it's more designed for folks who are in the field, who have the, the, the technical skill, who want to go back for more learning. Um, so, so you're welcome to check that one out. I, I, I can't tell you much more about it. Um, they, didn't, they didn't coordinate coordinate with with my program it's a completely separate program they use a, a curriculum that they they purchase from uh, a national trade organization um so 
you know, I've, I've heard from some students that, that the classroom stuff is interesting, but they were really hoping for more hands-on skill. Um, but it really depends on what your hand on, what your technical skill is currently, um, whether or not okay. that might be a good fit, but that's definitely something that to, you, 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 I would encourage you to check out with them. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, we don't require a drug test. So we have a, a question here, is having a criminal record a huge problem? Um, no, no, uh, you know, you, you paid your debt to society. Um, you know, we, we can't allow you to use drugs while you're on campus for safety reasons, um, but um, there is no drug test required for any of our programs except for the pre-apprenticeship program, which is union-based. They do require a, a drug test and that's a, one of the union requirements. Um, we, are, we are a school, we take everybody. Everybody is welcome. No, not that I'm aware of. Again, are there requirements related to citizenship or immigration status to participate? No, we welcome everybody. Katie, would you mind talking a little bit about the difference between the pre-apprenticeship program and this program? Yeah, so the, the carpentry program focuses mostly on residential carpentry and a little bit of like commercial, but we're primarily residential carpentry and we offer a very broad range of training and we are training you, you are learning the skills. And so we design our projects, most of our curriculum is project-based, it's mostly hands-on. Um, the, the goal is for you to develop the best possible carpentry and woodworking skills you can while you're with us. And, and we acknowledge you're still starting out in your career, but we provide the technical training. The pre-apprenticeship construction program is a pre-union indoctrination. And I use that word because the union uses that word. Not, I don't, indoctrination has all kinds of negative associations, but it's, but it's a union term. And it's designed to expose folks to different union trades and to give them the skills to pass the union test to start their training with the union. And union work is very specialized. So for example, if you were to be a union carpenter, you're primarily gonna be working commercial and union carpenters build scaffolding uh, and set up concrete forms. That's what the definition of a union carpenter does. Now there are union finished carpenters, there are union concrete people, there are union plumbers, there are union electricians, but union training and union trades are very narrow focused. And there's no judgment there, it just is, just sort of compare and contrast with, with carpentry. Um, and this gives folks uh, sort of an advantage or a leg up over somebody off the street to go in and, and pass the union exam to start their training as a zero level apprentice. So we have some students in my program, which primarily has a, a residential focus, decide they wanna go into the union, become union carpenters or union masons. And we absolutely support that. Our students get priority with the union. Um, most of them, can, can test out of most of the union training and go in at journey level or pretty close to journey level. Um, the union loves to, to, take, to get our students with who are trained already. Um, whereas the, the students in the, in the pre-apprentice construction training program, the PAC program, um, they go in as a zero level apprentice. And then, um, okay, so I'm happy to, 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 to talk more about that, but those are the main, the main distinctions. Um, and that program is a one quarter certificate program. And we've had students do both. Um, so it really depends on, on what you're looking for. If you're looking for technical carpentry training and woodworking training, um, the carpentry program is probably a better, a better fit. If you're looking for a, what, what kind of trade do I wanna go into uh, to start, then maybe the PAC program is, is something you might wanna look into. Other questions? Since you've asked, there are lots of financial aid options available. Um, we have financial aid. There are also a lot of trade specific scholarships. Uh, we have a lot of companies that have also created scholarships for our students. Um, so if you're willing to do a little legwork, um, anybody who needs help with funding um, can find help with funding and we provide a lot of support um, 
for that as well. Uh, for students, we can help you and connect you with companies that are looking for part-time work. Um, so the, the cost of the program is whatever it costs you to attend community college, um, but there's a lot of financial aid and scholarship support available both through the school, through the foundation, and then some construction specific and program specific uh, scholarships. You know, they, there used to be a, a, like a skills assessment test um, and that was sort of suspended during COVID times. I don't know if there is or not. Um, the Seattle Central College has started doing more kind of like a, a skills assessment to, to see which way, if, if somebody shows up at the college and they don't know what to study, there's, there's a, an assessment test that they're given that's more, more you know, like, a, like an interest assessment. Um, I don't think I should know this. This would be a good question to ask when you go back to the main to the main uh, meeting of what kind of English and math placement uh, to do the program. I don't think there is any more, but don't quote me on that. Other questions? Anybody have any building experience? I see one, one head shaking. If you count messing around in the garage and watching YouTube videos, then. It all, it all counts, it all counts, right? And again, we have folks who have never picked up a tool before in their lives. And we have people who've got 20 years experience in the industry and there's a place for everybody at Wood Tech. Um, it's, it's really a remarkable place. I, I went through the boat building program in 1990 and I had gone to college um, and I was in my, my early twenties and it was by far the best school I ever went to. It's what I always hoped high school to be. I always hoped what college was going to be. Um, there's a, a really strong sense of community. Um, we learn by doing, you're encouraged to, to cooperate. Uh, you're, you're encouraged to experiment. And you know, if something doesn't go together, you, you tear it apart and you build it again. Um, and it takes a while to build a builder. And so it's really, really, really interesting to see kind of where students are and their skill um, and their ability to, to conceptualize in 3D and to do layout when they start versus where they end. Um, carpentry is really fun because the, the, the curriculum is different every quarter. You know, every quarter has a different personality and maybe you really groove on concrete. So you get to spend a quarter doing concrete and maybe you didn't know anything about framing and we get into framing and you decide, wow, I really wanna be a framer. Um, or, you know, we get into interior exterior finish and folks wanna focus on that. Again, a lot of our students are really interested in remodel because in remodel, you get to do everything, right? If you go do new construction, oftentimes you get more kind of locked into one, one type of skill. Um, and a lot of our students um, are really interested in a broad array of skills. I mean, it's part of the reason they've decided to come to school to learn. Um, and, you know, in, in five quarters with us, you gain the knowledge and the skills of somebody who's been out in the field like six, seven years. It's a really great jump start. What you don't have, obviously, is the experience or the speed. And in fact, we don't focus on speed at all. We kind of feel like school is the one place where you can take as much time as you need to learn how to put things together and to learn how to use the tools correctly and understand the materials correctly. So our projects are, are self-paced. There's no competition. Um, and it's really interesting to see, we, we really mix it up. We have students build things in different ways. And it's really interesting to see how your neighbor solves a problem building uh, and how your other neighbors solves a problem building and then how you're gonna figure out how you're gonna build. And, and we spend a lot of time on, on problem solving and critical thinking. And, you know, when we hear from employers about the skills they want, they're like, obviously, you know, somebody needs to know how to swing a hammer and use a circular saw and a table saw and a jointer safely, but they really want to know, can students read plans? Can they, can they problem solve? Can they think critically? Can they see a problem coming down the road? Um, so we spend a lot of time working on those skills uh, as well. Um, you know, a lot of our students are really interested in, in climate change and climate justice and housing justice and economic justice and racial justice, you name it. Um, and they see, you know, having, having 
a positive effect on the built environment as a way to affect change. Um, so we have students who are really interested in a lot of a lot of things in the community, and we really try and, and incorporate all of that interest into our curriculum and into the into the program. Other questions? Well, I'll tell you what, folks, I'm gonna put my school email in the chat just so that you all have it if you want it. So I just sent it out. Katie.chaplin, first name, dot, last name at seattlecolleges.edu. Um, if you have any questions, if something comes to you in the middle of the night, you have questions you didn't have time to ask today or you didn't think of or something at any point, please shoot me a message. I'm happy to set up a Zoom with you. We can talk. Um, I can answer questions via, via email. Um, I'm away from campus this quarter, um, but next quarter I can meet you on campus if you're, if you're allowed, but please let me know if you have other questions or just want to talk more about what we do on, on campus. Um, so I, I'll, I'll hang out here in the room for a little bit more if, if anybody wants to stick around and, and ask other things, but, but uh, I thank you for your, for your attendance here and for your questions, and uh, I hope to see you on campus at some point. So please let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Then if you want to get back to the, the main meeting, oh, you got it. All right.